As a young F-4 Phantom pilot, when I got my orders to the OV-10, I wasn't exactly excited. I mean, it flew slow, had props, looked tiny. But when I got to training and they handed me this manual and I found out I was going to be a Bronco Buster, I thought, is this a joke? Little did I realize that my three years in Germany flying the OV-10 Bronco would be one of the funnest flying times in my life. Welcome back to the channel. Well, as a former real-life OV-10 pilot, I was excited to be included in the Azure Poly OV-10 Bronco beta program. The beta team included Don Spence, another Bronco pilot, and he and I pushed Azure Poly pretty hard, trying to get them to incorporate a lot of features into the aircraft, and they've done a really great job. Now, I saw a very nice and, and pretty detailed uh, review of this aircraft by CG Aviator. I'm going to link that above, and I suggest you watch that if you want all the basic information. Being a beta tester and one who's flown the actual airplane, I'm going to try to cover some of the more nuanced items about the design and hopefully compare it to the experience I had in the actual aircraft. Now, if you're a regular viewer of my channel, you know that I did a review on the Aribaba OV-10 Bronco. It's a freeware aircraft. I'm going to link that above. A lot of stories in there about my background flying in Germany in the OV-10. It might be of interest to you. So for those of you with short attention spans, let me give you the bottom line right now before I move on to some more of the granular details. This thing is exquisitely modeled. The beautiful textures, great artwork, unsurpassed. The system fidelity is very good. The engine is the only thing that could use just a little bit of work, but it's still very realistic to the actual experience. It's one of the most fun airplanes to fly because of the visibility, obviously, and it's perfect for VR flying, which is my favorite way to do it. In my over 50 years as a pilot, I've flown lots of airplanes from fighters to airliners, but I got to say the OV-10 was one of the most fun I've flown. Now, if you're leaving us now, please like, subscribe, share with your friends, love your comments. And for those who want the details, stick around and I'll share some of the great features from this aircraft by Azure Poly. So today we're going to find ourselves on the ramp at Edwards Air Force Base in California. I worked there for a while after college. Uh, I had to wait to go to pilot training because Vietnam was over. And I uh, worked for Northrop in flight test, not flying, but as an engineer. As we enter the cockpit, we're greeted by the, the electronic flight bag. This is a place to set things up for the flight. You can navigate the pages on the left uh, vertically. And uh, you can see here, the first page just allows you to remove ground equipment. You can also unlock the props. I'll talk about that later, the little red uh, click on those little red locks on the propellers. And uh, at the bottom, quick state, you can start cold and dark. You can start the engines or you can be ready for takeoff. The next screen allows you to open and close canopies, open the engine nacelles, the rear cargo door, also to make other things visible or invisible like the co-pilot, the gun sight. You can also display uh, navigation, the G, GNS 430, or the uh, if you have them installed, the add-ons for the uh, 650 Garmin GTNs, you can show those on the instrument uh, glare shield also. Next page allows you to set your fuel levels on all the tanks, including the external. There's also a page for loading out weapons. Uh, you can do everything from the M60 machine guns that are mounted in the sponsons to pylon-mounted AIM-9D heat seeker missiles on the wings and uh, rocket launchers uh, on the sponsons also. There's a handy map display you can use for VFR navigation. And although the OV-10 had no autopilot, they've provided an autopilot on the tablet that allows you to hold altitudes, headings, vertical speeds. And if you're a purist, you can just ignore it. This next page is Azure Poly's brilliant and unique solution to a problem that came up during the beta program. Without third-party software, there seemed to be no easy way to set and calibrate hardware throttle quadrant axes to the simulator. First, to allow the power levers to operate from full forward to full reverse thrust. And second, to match any physical detents on the throttle quadrant to the detents on the power levers and condition levers in the simulator. After binding the axis for the power lever or the throttle and the condition lever in Microsoft Flight Simulator, the rest you can do on the tablet. 
since the top and the bottom of the axis is known, we only need to set the two center detents in each case. This is how simple it is. You just have to set the uh, throttle to the position that you want for the detent. This case will set flight idle position or detent if we have one, and we'll click flight idle and set from current position. You see the white line jump to show that's set at 70%. It shows below. We'll move the throttle to the ground start, click ground start, select it in green and click set from current position. And you set the condition lever axis exactly the same way. Just remember to click save when you're done. And now your hardware synced up with the simulator and any detents you may have installed on your hardware. There's also a uh, info tab and uh, clicking on the right side of the uh, tablet on the rim will get, take it down and put it on the seat. Now in the final release version, it's going to put it in a location to the right, kind of by the canopy rail on the right side so it's visible in flight and it won't be blocking the view. That was a last minute request we made and uh, it didn't make it into the beta, but it'll be in the final release. That's where it'll go when you click on the right edge. So let's take a short flight over to Fox Field in Lancaster, California. When I was at Edwards uh, as an engineer, I was flight instructing there to stay current before I went into the Air Force. So I've flown around this area a lot and I thought it would be fun to fly around here again in the OV-10. You can see the airplane is beautifully modeled. By the way, don't tell my Air Force buddies that uh, that I was flying a Marine uh, paint job, but this livery is uh, the only one that has a good de desert camouflage. And I thought it looked really cool flying out over the desert. You can see that this is not only beautifully modeled on the outside, but the cockpit is, is really well done. Right down to the scratches and the dirt, I really feel like I'm back in the OV-10. Layout of the cockpit is pretty standard. There's a few variations from the Air Force OV-10s. Some extra lights under the glare shield there and a uh, batteries, uh, double battery switch on the right. This was modeled after the OV-10B uh, that they had access to, so it's slightly different. Unless you knew the airplane well, you wouldn't notice the differences. So let's do a test of the warning lights. And you can see the marker beacon lights in the center on top too that aren't installed on most OV-10s. And a fire test. Just push the switch the other direction and we'll get the fire lights and check those. And this is pretty typical weather for Edwards Air Force Base. When I lived there for almost a year, I saw mostly blue skies, except for just a few days. Before we start, we need to make sure the props are on the locks in flat pitch because this is a geared engine and there's going to be resisted by the propeller. So uh, we would get an over temp if we had feathered engines and we tried to spin those paddles around uh, against the wind. So these are streamlined and we're ready to start. So starting's pretty easy. We just hold the start switch up to start momentarily. We get the ignition uh, starter light on, on the bottom right. We're looking for oil pressure coming up. It's between eight to 10% will bring the left condition lever up to normal flight. We're looking for an EGT rise, starter cut out, and as it stabilizes, we're ready to start number two with the same procedure. Put the start switch up to start. Starter is engaged. Condition lever to normal flight. And a light off. Starter cut out. Waiting for a rollback on the EGT and the engines are stabilized and we're ready for taxi flaps to take off. Now we mentioned that the props were in flat pitch. We need to get those off the prop locks before we can get any forward thrust. So we're going to have to pull the airplane into slightly into reverse thrust That'll allow them to release, and then we should have forward thrust available. Parking brake released. Check the brakes. 
I just love the way they modeled that nose gear and the dynamics. And look at it's castering like it's supposed to. When the nose gearing's not engaged, it uh, casters. Oh, it's a fairly long taxi out here, so let me explain a few things while we taxi. I wanted to explain a little bit about the crop locks and how those work. Now, what happens uh, is when you shut down, you pull the aircraft, uh, the throttles into reverse, full reverse, while the engines are spinning down. And there's some pins that hold the props in the lock position flat. But what has to happen is as the RPM slows down, the centrifugal force no longer can overcome springs that are trying to push those springs in and uh, they get behind the props and basically lock them so they can't come back from reverse any further than flat pitch. The way it works on start is we get the engines up to speed, they're mechanically locked, but when we pull them into reverse, the mechanical locks can release and the centrifugal force will take those pins out of, out of commission so that the uh, forward motion, uh, forward thrust on the prop is available. So there's a couple ways to get rid of those. The way we did it is the right way, a little reverse thrust um, before you taxi to get them off the locks. And it's very obvious if they're locked. Now on this airplane, the modeling's not perfect and you can taxi with the props locked, not very fast, and you'll be using a high power setting. But if you hit to 100% or full throttle, uh, the prop locks will unlock for people who don't know how to operate them, kind of a fail safe. Uh, just for the simulation. And the other way to unlock them, as you saw, was with the uh, tablet. You can click the little red locks on the props and that will do the same thing. I think the guys at Azure Poly didn't want people to think there was a bug in the airplane when it was actually because they modeled it so perfectly. I was at Edwards because I was hired right after college uh, for uh, the white, lightweight fighter program. It was the uh, YF-16 and the YF-17. And they were trying to pick a plane that the Air Force and the Navy would both use. As it turned out, we lost. And that's kind of why they hired me. They knew that they might have to lay people off in a year anyway. And that's when I was scheduled to go to pilot training in the Air Force. Of course, the our Air Force and the Navy couldn't agree. And the Air Force took the F-16 and the F-17 became the F-18 Hornet and the Navy has lots of those still flying, modern variants of it. Okay, at the runway, we need to push the condition levers up to take off and land. You'll hear the engine speed up, and we're ready to go. And take off and land, the RPM stays near 100% so that you have uh, power for uh, instant power for rejected takeoffs or for an aborted landing when you need to go around. Uh, the RPM is already up there and ready to go. the runway and final look clear another gorgeous day in the desert i really enjoyed living in the desert in fact uh, i was able to go back there for f4 training at georgia air force base in victorville california now we'll set the brake here and we'll run up the engines. We're looking for a minimum torque value that would be calculated based on the temperature. And we got that value, we release the brake and we're on our way. Speed's alive, two good engines. Looking for rotation about 90. Start out at about 100 in the climb. Positive rate, gear up. 10 knots will keep you above VMC uh, for engine loss, uh, even at max gross. Once we get out of the pattern, we'll uh, drop down and do a little low level flying on our way over to uh, Fox Field. If you saw my previous review, you know there were several things in the Airy Baba UV-10 Bronco uh, that I pointed out, and they were real deal breakers for me. I got to say that the guys at Azure uh, Poly have really pretty much knocked most of those out. There's very little here that's not pretty true to the OV-10. 
after takeoff checklist, and we can pull the condition levers back to normal flight. All the pertinent systems operate pretty much like the airplane. There's just a few things like the UHF radio uh, that aren't supported. So let's take this aircraft down low where it belongs. Now I do most of my flying in VR now. I have a, a Pimax crystal headset and the view out of the OV-10 is fantastic. Of course on this little 16-9 screen you can't really appreciate it but the panoramic view in all directions out these big bulbous beautiful windows is just outstanding and it's really immersive. Now let me explain the one area where I was a little bit disappointed uh, and it had nothing to do with Azure Poly. It had to do with a basic a Microsoft Flight Simulator turboprop engine and the fact that it is really designed for a free turbine engine like the PT-6 that's on the King Air. On a free turbine engine the uh, prop is not actually connected to the core of the engine but really there's a turbine in the back that gets driven by the force of the engine exhaust and causes the propeller to spin. On the other hand, the geared engine like the TPE-331 or the J-76 that's on the OV-10, those engines are geared directly so that the prop and the engine spin connected through a gearbox. At Azure Poly, they wrote over 2,000 lines of code trying to convert that engine that uh, they have for the free turbine to make it operate like a geared engine. And they came pretty close, but there's a few small problems that were unable to be fixed and it would require a complete rewrite of the entire engine uh, from the bottom up and that's just not something that could be easily undertaken. Uh, it would take much longer than it would to develop the whole airplane. So really it's in a Sobos court if they want to create an engine that's designed correctly for a geared engine. The bottom line is that for the vast majority of the time, almost all the time you're operating this aircraft, you're going to have pretty accurate operation like the OV-10. There's just a few times at low RPMs near zero thrust going from forward thrust to reverse thrust that it sounds a little different than the aircraft and you don't get that instantaneous uh, transition in and out of reverse thrust like you do on the real aircraft. Yes. The engine aside, once you get the aircraft uh, in the air, it sounds, handles, and performs very much like the OV-10 Bronco. A great fun airplane to fly, especially down low. The OV-10 is obviously not a very clean aircraft, so even with 715 horsepower per engine, it's a bit underpowered. And when you're flying a single engine approach on a hot day, you want to definitely keep your speed up and stay high on the glide path and delay your landing flaps until you have the landing assured. Now that we have a little altitude, let's nose this thing over and get up close to 300 knots. 350 is the red line, and we'll do an over-the-top maneuver, a little loop here, and see how that feels. Up we go. Floating over the top. pull back to level. So let's head back into uh, Fox Field in uh, Lancaster, California. Uh, that's where I lived when I worked at Edwards Air Force Base and it was a pretty good drive out there every day. Okay, the airport's in sight about one o'clock and uh, as we approach here, we'll do our approach uh, landing checklist. Uh, condition levers to take off and land. In those days computers took up entire rooms and we had only limited computer ability so they used it for the flight tests in the morning when the winds were calm and we didn't start work till noon and work till about uh, 8 p.m. So I would stop by every morning at Fox Field and fly with a student so I could stay proficient before I went to pilot training. Here down. The chief pilot there at the flight school was Bill Barnes, and I had no idea who he was. In fact, it wasn't until after I left there that I found out about Poncho Barnes, his mother, in the Happy Bottom Riding Club. If you read the right stuff, it's where the 
pilots hung out from Edwards back in the early days of Edwards testing after World War II. I'll include a link to a documentary on YouTube about Poncho Barnes's Happy Bottom Riding Club above. This aircraft includes a bunch of pretty cool liveries, including the Cal Fire livery, where the aircraft is still being used today for lead-in, for firefighting, leading the tankers in. This aircraft could turn out to be a really fun way to participate in multiplayer firefighting activities. Microsoft Fly Simulator 2024. Gear down, flaps full, clear to land. As we said uh, on the takeoff, if we keep 110 knots uh, up to max takeoff and landing weight, uh, we'll have VMC in case of an engine loss. Normally slow to about 100 knots for normal landing weight if the runway length is no factor. And you can slow it up uh, beyond that once the landing is assured. No need to hold it off except your pride. The trailing link landing gear is, is designed for extremely rough surfaces. We can apply a little reverse thrust and we won't need any brakes. I have to say it blows me away that I can fly an OV-10 and VR with such realism when when I was in the Air Force we didn't even have a, a simulator for the OV-10. The fleet was so small. Amazing how far we've come. As you can see the modeling on this aircraft is beautiful. It speaks for itself. The cockpit, the exterior, the functionality of almost all the systems. They've done a marvelous job on this aircraft, and I, I really think everyone who has any interest at all should consider buying it. If you're a VR pilot, you just got to have one because the view is the best view of most any airplane you could ever fly, short of something that is an ultralight with no fuselage at all. If you're still here, thanks for hanging in for the entire review. You know, this aircraft has a special place in my life and in my heart. And I really am happy to see a revival of the OV-10, even if it is in a flight simulation mode. And it's really great for other people to be able to experience the fun of flying low level at 250 knots in an airplane that flies not all that different than a light aircraft, but still has a badass fighter look. Guns and rockets and missiles. We'll get the start levers back to normal flight. We normally do that right as we clear the runway, but I didn't this time. Now here's the shutdown procedure. If you don't do it right, you're going to have to uh, unfeather the engines before start. It involves condition levers to fuel shut off, full reverse thrust. Just hold the reverse thrust there until the engines stop rotating. They'll be in the flat pitch position, ready for the next pilot. If you like my videos, I appreciate it if you'd like, subscribe, share with your friends. I love your comments. And I hope you'll watch my next video. Click that notification bell if you'd like to be informed when I put a video out. I don't do it very often, but when I do, I try to make it something interesting. As you can see, props are on the locks. We're ready for the next pilot. Have a great day.